everybody and welcome to a new Learn to Digitize video. I am Sue from OML Embroidery and today we are going to talk about parameters. Um, we are in studio and we're going to go through a whole bunch of the parameters that you can do. Hopefully I can fit it on to one quick tip video, but I'm going to do a whole series of parameters and show you how much control you have over all the stitches that you do. So to show you this, let's start with uh, just a little design, just so we have something to work with. No big deal. So let's do it like this. And there you go. Let's make this there. So how about just like that? That's good enough. Maybe a bit wider. Maybe. And let's generate it. And there you go. That's normally what you do if you want to make any changes now. We right click and we go into parameters and that opened up off screen. So let me move it. We'll put it there. Now there's a lot of things you can do here and we've gone over a few things. The one thing I'd like to point out you can do, this is probably what you see and it's just the basics. If you go up here under parameters, you can do show, show more parameters and that's going to give you more details. If you don't need it, you can you can stick with this one and that just gives, gives you the basics. So I like the show more because I like some control. So here we are, we just have a plain fill. Now you can, you know, of course you can change the type of stitches and you got to hit apply um, and then you can see them. Why don't we make this um, 3D view and go back into parameters and then you can probably better see what I'm doing. Let's try that. Parameters slip it over so you can see it. Let's put it right here so I can zoom right in. So we know we can change the fill stitches and we've got a few of them. And there we go and you can see it has to be big enough for the effect to show. And I showed you how to do more parameters and you get a lot of these and you're like what is that? Well you can also, let's start at the top, you can change the auto column. Yeah, let's. This isn't going to work and you'll see why it's way too thick. So if you get a design like this, it's too wide to do it. And that's exactly what it would stitch out to be. So we don't want that. But did you know you can click on use pattern and we can pick another pattern and go apply and it's a different kind of stitch and they kind of move. You see how they they bend to fit in, which is really cool. The other thing you can do on auto column is um, select your underlay. Now if you leave it on auto select column underlay it's going to do all of these. So let's uncheck it. Now um, you can do center which it goes through the middle of it. Uh, edge which makes it just puts like a, a base down so you can have a nice sharp edge which is nice. And zigzag of course goes zigzag all over the place and we know that. Now this control here is for the underlay. So you can make the distance between the stitches bigger or smaller if you want more dense. Um, that's how you do that. I don't pay a lot of attention to it. Either I use underlay or I don't, depending on what I'm doing. Most of the time you do need underlay. It sets a wonderful base down. Uh, you don't always need all of it. Sometimes, you know, on a satin column, you don't need the center. I just go for the zigzag and leave the edge and do it like that. So we know about that. So that's auto column. How about motif stitches? We've gone through that, but we're looking at parameters. So let's apply a motif stitch so you can see. Cool. We know that. Use jump stitches and those are jump stitches between the rows. You can shift them. Let's do a nice big shift here so you can see how it does it. See it shifts them I could have done it halfway, that probably wasn't a good example. It shifts between the rows. So you can, the shift was zero and they all match up. So let's do maybe four, just to show you, apply, kind of halfway. See how it shifts everything around? So you can play with that one quite a bit. Now this one is a horizontal, 
distance. Let's make it quite a bit bigger and then you can see what it does. It stretches the whole thing out, which is also a really good effect. You can get something really cool with that. Let's um, put that back. Let's put it at like four. That's what it was. Oh, and then we must do apply so you can see. That's pretty squishy, but we're going to leave it like that just for now. Now scale. Let's see. You guys can probably guess what this does. Let's put it down to 50 and apply. See? 50%. So you can go smaller, which is 50% of the original 100% size. Or we can whack it right out crazily to, you know, 150% and apply. And there you go. They're much bigger. So let's put this back down to 100 those are awesome perimeters that you can play around with. Gradient, um, you can also add a gradient to just about anything. I don't know if you guys know that. I am going to do a big long video about gradients and uh, you guys will have to check it out. That's not a good example of it, but it will do the same thing on just about any stitch that you want. Um, it's not really great with the motif stitch, this motif stitch, but it's going to do more dense at the top for this one and then lighter. It's just really hard to see it on this one. Maybe I could pick another one that would look better. I don't really know offhand which one would look better, but let's try something kind of dense and see if it'll show. Yeah, it doesn't really work, but that's okay. That You can use gradient and you can play around with gradients on everything that you do. See, that moved it a little bit, but it just doesn't really show well enough. You can also, if this is highlighted, you can change the angles. See? And that's if you have something going the wrong way or you want it going a different way. See how it completely shifts them around? Um, that's wonderful for the motif stitches. I think that's really great. Let's put, uh, why don't we make it more dramatic on the, and see if I picked the right one. I probably didn't do enough. So let's make it like 15 or something. How about that? Yeah, it kind of, it kind of spaces them out and then makes them, this is a very subtle effect. We can do it more. Can you see the difference though? Hopefully you can. So if you didn't know that, you can use gradient on just about any kind of stitches. See, it, it does move them around. It's not the greatest on that, but you know, that's okay. So let's switch then to a plain fill. Now all these settings that I messed around with are still there. Um, we must hit apply. Now you can see the effect very clearly on that. Let's go back to just a regular stitch for now and hit apply because we're showing you everything. Do you see how the gradient works? It's really thick here and then thinned out and then thick again. And that's the one that we picked. That is the, let's try this one. Um, play around with the gradients. You can really get a great effect. And bear in mind too, when you're looking at it in 3D, it does look kind of weird. Um, it looks way better when you stitch it out. Uh, the colors will blend a little better and it's quite lovely, but you have to stitch it out to, to get the real effect. Um, it does look very strange otherwise. So let's put this slowly but surely back down to zero so we can move along to other perimeters. And there's a lot of perimeters. I think I'm going to do four or five videos on perimeters for everything. All right, back to normal, back to a fill stitch. Let's check out this perimeter. Wave and apply. Oh, well, it didn't work. Want to know why? Because I didn't put a wave in it. Let's wave it around and then apply. Can you see that? That is a really cool effect. Let me try making it another color and maybe you can see it better. Oh, I can't do that while I'm in here. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, I can. There you go. Now you can see it a little bit better. How about uh, flat 3D? No, we can't change anything because I still have this going. So you can play around with your wave. How about one like that? And really get some uh, detail going on in here. Um, so use jumps. That's more for the motif stitches, but you're just telling it use jumps or not jumps in between the rows. 
just leave that on. Um, in Motif, I'm going to show you how you can play around with that. Let, you can do all sorts of effects. Circular. Oh, it's going to take a minute to think about it. See? Really cool. Can you see how that's... And when it stitches, it's going to go stitch like that. So really cool. Probably not the greatest shape for that, but you get the idea. Square. I like that one. Again, it has to think about it. But that's a really nice, it's almost like a carving effect. If you had a different shape, that would be better. And you should try using them. The idea about these parameters is that you can put a lot of detail in your work. Now, if it's grayed out, that means you can't use it for that subject. So here's another thing you can do, um, the underlay stitches. And a great way to see it is to take this off. Cover stitches are the top stitches that we just did. And there you can see the underlay. So it has, um, let me take them off there, zigzag, right? You can do the zigzag. But you can change the angle of the zigzag as well and see it completely changed it. Just to play around with that if you need, depending on what you're stitching it out on. And you can also change the distance. Let's change that and hit apply. See it's a bigger distance in between. That's what that one's for. You can do zigzag one and zigzag two. And that see, I have one at five and one at eight, but let's put this one at eight and click apply. And there you go. It does it differently every time. So depending on what you need for that, let's put it back at five. Check mark, check mark, there we go. Apply, takes a minute to think about it. And let's put this one back as well. Check mark, apply, there you go. So we have the angles kind of funny, but we can, how about we match them and see. But you can play around with that depending on what you're stitching it on. Different effects, different coverage, whatever you need. Edge is self-explanatory. It goes around the edge. And what this does is lay down the foundation. So when you put your cover stitches on, and you can see there's a green arrow there reminding you to put your cover stitches on because you don't necessarily just want underlay, you can um, see what your underlay is going to look like. And if you're do, since doing something really thick, you want the edges, you want it in zigzag, and you want to center. And uh, But if you don't, you can just feel free to take them off, and then you got nothing. This will be a whole lot of nothing. So let's put our cover stitches. And again, the cover stitches are the ones on the top. Give it a minute to think, and we have a different fill. Oh, we still have the square effect. My bad. I forgot I was leaving that on. None. And now apply. There you go. So there's a lot of other things too. Random broadening. Let's see. This is kind of cool. This has to do with the edges. So let's make it a four, I think. Close enough. See how it does that? That would be great for fur stitch. Now it does side one and side two, but you have to tell it. So it makes random stitches at the end, and this is basically the length of the random stitches. So let's make this one quite a bit bigger, and then you can see the big difference. So you could use it for feathers, or for fur, or for a different effect. It's still holding the shape, but it's very random. I think that looks absolutely awesome, and it's a really quick way of randomizing the stitches. And even if you put underlay on, it still looks good. It just has a better underlay. So there you go. Those are basic stitch parameters in Studio. Um, there's more. There's quite a few parameters that we can work on just to simply change your stitches. If you were thinking it was fill stitches, motif stitches, and auto column, and that's it, you're wrong. There's a lot you can do to change the stitches in so many ways. And uh, I think it's awesome, and it's a really quick way to add interest to your embroidery. Anyways, thank you for watching. As always, happy digitizing. Keep calm and digitize on. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video so we can keep doing more for you. Thanks.